Hi, I'm Ann Mahaffey and I'm an Applications Engineer working on web tools here at Analog Devices. And in this video, I'm going to describe how we can build this um, SAR ADC analog input model in LTSpice. Um, so when using LTSpice, I'm going to use an actual example of one of our SAR ADCs. Um, and so just to review what we've discussed in the previous videos in this series, um, we've, we've derived all the equations to describe the kickback behavior of the ADC and how the RC filter is going to affect the settling. Um, and then using these equations and using this, this device, the LTC 2378-20, um, so we can plug in all the parameters of the part from the data sheet. And then also I've used this RC filter of 10 ohms and three nanofarads um, for this example. And then so assuming that we use the full sample rate of a meg, a meg sample per second, we've got this acquisition time of 312 nanoseconds. And so plugging this into these equations, we've got that to settle to a half an LSB, our acquisition time would need to be at least 315 nanoseconds, which is actually just a little shy of what it needs to be. So in this example, it's actually showing that it'll not quite be settled to an LSB at the end of acquisition, um, almost, but not quite. Um, and so now I'm going to, to show how we would build this in LTSpice. So here's our analog input model for a SAR ADC that I've built up in LTSpice. And in this example, I'm, I'm using the LTC 2378 uh, for, this, for the schematic and for the, um, the specific values for each component and the timing. Um, so the same, the same example that I had on the whiteboard. And you can see we've got the, the switch here that controls um, the acquisition, the connection of the sample cap to the input. And then here's the switch that grounds this node before acquisition. We've got the RC filter, and then in this case, I'm just using an ideal uh, voltage source here because that's what's matching the, you know, sort of the mathematical model that we've built up so far. Um, the equations that, that we have, that we have uh, at this point don't account for any driver non-ideal behaviors. So for now, I'm just going to show an ideal voltage source. Um, so over here... I've got some voltage sources that control the timing of the switches um, that's dependent on the conversion time parameter that I've set and the uh, sample rate. And then down here is just essentially a little bit of math to convert the ADC input to an error term and then to convert that error term from uh, volts to an LSB's unit. And that's just for plotting to make, to make it easier to look at things. And so if I take a look at this, you can see I've got, um, these are my two signals for the, the switches. So we've got this conversion cycle here, which is a little longer, and then the acquisition cycle. And you can see the kickback occurring at the beginning of acquisition. And you can see that it's just switching between conversion and acquisition back and forth and each uh, pair of these is a, is a sample. Um, and so we've got, um, I'm, I've plotted the what the input looks like. We're driving a, a full scale reference into the input and then we're looking at the resulting uh, kickback when that switch closes. And then here is just that conversion I made to turn this voltage into an error term uh, in LSBs. And so we can just take a really quick look to um, compare the simulation to the calculations that we just had on the board. And so the first thing we can look at is this kickback size. And so here, if I just take a look at the voltage difference between these two uh, cursor points, we can see that there's about a 74 millivolt um, voltage difference here, which is pretty much right on with what we uh, calculated uh, and, and, and showed on the whiteboard previously. Something else we can look at is um, the error term. So the way I do this is I, I compare this voltage here that I would consider to be very settled right before this kickback. And I would compare it to the voltage at this point right here, 
where the acquisition cycle is over. And so here um, now it's showing that this is a millivolts term, but you remember I, I did the conversion to LSB. So looking at this, this is saying it's a little more than half of an LSB of error, which again is is pretty much what we uh, calculated. So we um, we know that the acquisition cycle is 312 nanoseconds long, and we had worked out that um, that there was 315 nanoseconds required to settle. So we're just a little short on our time to settle to a half an LSB, which is exactly what this is saying. Now, if we take a look um, at this model again, and instead of using this ideal voltage source, we changed it up with a, um, an actual driver macro model, we'll start to see where the equations that we uh, have have developed up to this point won't don't accurately represent what's going on um, necessarily if you if you are actually using a, uh, an actual device here so switching this out with an actual driver so i've selected this driver because i know that this driver is not suitable for driving this adc um, so if i were to have picked a, a different driver that had a, a, a much higher uh, gain bandwidth and and was more capable of driving, um, we wouldn't see what I'm what I'm getting ready to show. But in this case, I know that this driver won't drive this well. And so if we run the simulation and look at the results and, and comparing to what we remember the results looking like with the ideal source, you can see that here, we've got this, this spike that we would expect with acquisition, but then we see that there is just this significant amount of ringing and it never really settles out. Um, so there's some things you can do to slow the sample rate if you're, um, if you're ringing and it's, and it's looking like it'll settle, but you just need a little more time. But this, this driver is just entirely unsuitable. It's just gonna ring um, for quite a while. And so that's just to show you what, um, what this can look like when you've not picked a suitable driver. And that's something that I'll discuss in a, in a later video, how to go about selecting a proper driver um, for this ADC. So again, taking a look at a, a more suitable driver for this ADC, run simulation. Here you can see that the results match up a lot closer with the equations that we've uh, developed. Now you can still see it's still important to simulate with a driver with, with the driver macro model, even if you um, believe that it's it's suitable, because you will um, any driver you select is going to have some non-ideal behaviors, and you can see this one does have a little bit of ringing and a little bit of settling. But as you can see, uh, if we just take a look at the settling error. As you can see, we're, we're, we're well settled within a half an LSB in this case. So um, again, just to demonstrate how you can, can double check your work with a, a simulation like this. So in the next video, I'm gonna show how you can do all these simulations with our Precision ADC Driver Tool, which is an online tool available on our website.